Dear Jamie, me and Bartle Bone and Jim Rag spent a time as mule skinners for General Custer. Three of us were used to hunting and trapping the Rockies, so we didn't realize taking orders be so hard to stomach. By that time, the silver had run out, the railroads were coming, and everything was about to change. But the adventures weren't quite over yet. Mule skinners, you say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure you ain't trappers? Well, we were trappers 25 years, but... No more. Rockies, more trapped out. We were scouts, too. We know every trail, creek, pond, river, between Colorado and Canada. We was hoping the Custer would need a couple of scouts, but seeing as how those positions have been filled by Bill Hickok and, um, and a couple of crow. Seeing how them positions done filled were mule skinners. Yeah. You don't look like much, fella. Sure you can crack a bull whip? Custer know he's got a female bullwhacker? Of course he don't. Don't you go telling him. Don't I always keep your secrets? Where are you going? You're supposed to be scouting this expedition. About to go out and hunt up some fresh meat when you tried to kill me. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. <laughs> what do you want? All these years, I never could quite figure you out. You never will, Hickok. <laughs> Bye, 
on, girls. I wish you liked to talk. I could improve your education considerable. I don't mind talk. I didn't say you'd mind it. I said I wish you liked it. Bullseye. No beans tonight. I think he was sickly. Moving awful slow. Hogwash. Yeah, well, I ain't eating it. I ain't up to digesting diseased animal. Suit yourself. Oh. We didn't know it then, Janie. But them was the last of the Wild West times. Before everything changed and Billy Cody made a show of it. Them last few days of wildness was our glory days. Wild Bill Hickok, Dora and Blue, Jim and Bartle, Buffalo Bill Cody, and your mother, Calamity Jane. seeing a lady in her underwear. <laughs> what you packing up for? You just made camp. All these years, Mark Jane, I never presumed to give you advice. But you ought to take Bartle and Jim and get out of here. Why? Maybe hey, just because you know me. I'm telling you, it's a good time to go. Thanks, Bill. Where are you headed? Deadwood! Yes, sir! Howdy, General. Looks like we're heading for the Big Horn. You hoping to find more gold? You dismissed, Captain. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who told you that, mister? We're gonna clear out any Indians that fail to obey the relocation notice. <laughs> Where did you post this here notice, and what language was it in? I don't need your advice, mister. I have my own scouts. Yeah, but they ain't Sioux. This is hunting season now, and there's going to be thousands of Sioux. Do not tell me how to fight Indians. I took down Black Kettle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we heard about it. But we're talking about Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. They could leave their hunting grounds. You only got... Two, three hundred men here. We are the Seventh Cavalry. Did you hear that? Yep. I know not right remember who first called me Calamity or why, but it's no mystery why it stuck. Your mother don't always think first before jumping in, Janie. When Custer found out I was a woman, he forced me into doing damn humiliating woman's work. Hey, Clam! We're moving out! I'll catch up with you, boys. As soon as I can. Calamity, don't take too long. That gentleman is crazy. He's crazy. Let's go.
Jim and Bartle were among the few left who remembered the days when beaver were plentiful. The boys knew every river from the Oregon Trail to the Rio Grande. But they could never quite figure out that what they were searching for they'd already used up. The Indians were dwindling, the buffalo were gone, and with them went the life we knew. This pond used to be boiling with beaver. I can still hear it sometimes when I'm asleep. What? That sound. That slapping sound a beaver's tail makes on the water. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, I can hear it too. of every gold town when it either gets civilized or goes bust. Before it makes up its mind which, men go crazy drinking, gambling, and whoring. Cutting into each other's claims and shooting each other over trifles. Deadwood just happened to be in its hellfire days. Well, ain't this a sight for sore eyes? Morning, Harry. First one still on the house? Only for you, Clam. He got kicked out the army. You sure as hell travels fast, but don't that beat all? I think the damn fools never saw teeth before. <laughs> all right, you debauched sinners. Let's drink to my bazooms. They got me out of custards of regulars. Bless them all. Large and small. Hi, Bill. Hey, Clem. Yes, sir, sweetheart. Well, you two women, you just... Hey, yo. <laughs> you are a mess. I think these things, these buckskins are starting to grow hair. Hold on. Get out of my bed. Can you stink? <laughs> So you settling down finally in Deadwood? No, it's getting mean here. You know how it is. Where do you figure I'm moving to next? Some place closer to Blue's Ranch, I guess. Why don't you just marry him? She asked you a hundred times. You know I can't do that. Mercy, Martha Jane. You lose a hugging contest with a skunk? No, damn well, that ain't skunk, do you? It's Chris. Yeah, I'll burn these for you. Hey, watch out, there's money in them pockets. If there's money, I'll find it. Don't you worry about that. All right. 
Tell me, what's different about you? Nothing. Something's different about you. Come on, you know you can't lie to me. I ain't lying to you, Dork. Am I? Oh my God, Martha Jane. I've known you for 20 years and this has never happened to you. What? Well, nothing's happened to me. You are in love. Oh, God. What's the point? I'd rather die than have him know it. It's Hickok, is it? No! Wild Bill. Oh, let me think. Oh, no, Dora, don't start thinking. It's a long way from hopeless. He don't like princes, and he don't even like whores that much, but we're gonna get him to like you. I don't want him to like me. I just want to die. Okay, well, it's a serious condition, darling, but it ain't fatal. Now, here, get out of that tub, because we've got work to do. There. Open your eyes. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Here, send it. You see? Aren't you beautiful? I don't look anything like myself. Oh, yes, you do. You look exactly like yourself. Thank <laughs> you. 
Come here, darling. Have a seat. I need a lucky charm. Who I got sitting on my knee? It's Calamity Jane. Oh, oh Bloom. She'll be all right. No, she won't. Not out there. Not dressed like that. Oh, this is Calamity. She can take care of herself. She'll be back. No, she won't. Not a dead one. Not sleep with you worrying. Oh, I can't help worrying, Blue. It's all my fault. I never should have gotten her off. Go see that. Uh -huh. Bill Hickok is a son of a bitch. He sure is. You know, there have been times in my life I might not have made it if it wasn't for Jane. Yeah, you've done the same for her. I've seen it myself, lots of times. I know. It makes me sad that no man has ever loved her, you know? Mm. That's something they can never say about you, Hill. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When are you going to marry me, Dora? i got to get back to my ranch. Come with me. Mm -hmm. Can't. I 
I love you, Blue. Mm -hmm. You know how much I love you. But I can't marry you. Yeah, well, you better quit saying that, because one day I might quit asking. I am thinking about moving closer, though. Well, maybe opening a hotel in my city. You are stubborn old catfish. <laughs> but I'm going to reel you in. A few miles at a time. Till eventually I land you as my wife. Got any dry wood? I would have brought some with me, but I didn't know anyone was in Wyoming. Where you been? I ain't seen you in over a month. I wanted to see if any of my people were left in the Dakotas. Any luck finding them? A few are there. But only their spirits. You should not go this way came to tell you this. Well, I'm headed for the Yellowstone this morning. I always go this way. Go another way. Why? Smell of death. Maybe 50 miles. Well, I ain't going 50 miles out of my way. I ain't spooked by death. I nursed the miners out there in Deadwood through scarlet fever. 40 of them died. There ain't nothing worse than that. Your dog sure lived long for one who likes to chase bears. So have you, and so have I. <laughs> <laughs> Want some coffee, no ears? Uh, watch day. When no ears was ten, his people got into a fight with some French traders. He woke to discover that his people were dead and his ears were cut off. He could still hear in a whistling kind of way. And he could always sense things no one else could. Especially death. Custer. I saw the flag. We should tell somebody. Why? 
What's that massacre back there? Was that like the one where they cut off your ears and left you for dead? I was just a child. But all massacres are alike. The smell of death. The big birds to pick the bones clean. But then... There were only Indian dead. And only me to sing for them. I must have eaten something bad this morning. I usually got a stronger stomach than that. It is because of the child. Child? I didn't see no child. The one you're carrying. You're crazy. That's impossible. I might be crazy, but you know it is possible. But that can't be. I mean, I can't. I can't have a child. You will, in the spring. God almighty. I can't be nobody's mother. I got no kind of life. I got no place to live. What am I gonna do? If you need a place to go before the child comes, I know of a place. How will I live? You will live. You always seem to be looking out for me, Noyers. Why is that? These fish are ready. Come and have some. this place where I could hold up the Wind River about four days ride thanks no ears been thinking we ought to buy ourselves a couple of horses what's wrong with moving on our own two feet like we always have my feet are getting tired that's what your feet hell we ain't been off a supply wagon it's more than a month maybe i spent too many years knee deep in icy water set traps i've always considered the horse a large and dangerous animal i just as soon own a bear there ain't nothing wrong with horses. You're so cussed, Henry, you wouldn't agree to anything. I'm Henry. You're so ornery, nobody but me would put up with you. Yeah. Must have happened. I don't suppose we'll ever see anything like this again. What Jim and Bartle had stumbled onto that day was the Great Leaving. We called it Custer's Last Stand. The Indians knew it had really been theirs. They had signed their own death warrant. 
China now. Here, Dizzy. Well, Madame Dora. I'm not French, Hickok. You're not? No. Next thing you'll be telling me you're not a madam, neither. Men like you are the reason that I'm leaving this town. I'm sorry to hear that. It'll be our loss. Great loss. Never really thought of myself as a woman, Jane. I guess that's why I didn't really feel like myself when I was carrying you. I was with Dora when she had her babies. None of them lived. They were part of me. Never really let myself believe that you'd be real. Without her babies to hold her in place, Dora had a restlessness inside her that kept her moving from one hotel to the next, one town to another. She could never find any peace except when she was with Blue. But I stayed put all those months, hold up, waiting for you to come. loved by a man, Jane, and that's just a plain fact, I ain't saying it for pity. But because of your daddy, I know what it is to love one. I want you to know that you were born out of as good a love as anybody gets born from, honey. Don't you ever forget that. Death is strong here. Even you must smell it. Gunpowder, kerosene, and piss. That's all I smell. There, see? Whoever he is, it's no grief to me. They hang. Jack McCall. What they hang him for? Kill him all, Bill Hickok. Just a moment. Where is Dora Dufresne? She's gone. She uh, sold out and moved away six months ago. Excuse me. 
May I speak to you for a moment? Whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. I'm not selling anything. I would just like to talk to you. Please, just for a moment. Is this your child? What of it? May I ask where the father is? Murdered. If I'd have got here sooner, I'd have cut the liver out of Jack McCall and hung it on a tree Indian style. Did your husband leave you sufficient means? No, he did not. He weren't my husband. I can see you're in a terrible predicament. <laughs> my name is O'Neill. Captain James O'Neill. My wife and I lost a child a short time ago. A baby girl. That's why we came out here. I thought a journey out west might be a distraction for my wife from her grief. Where are you from? I'm from England originally, but we live in Illinois now, near Mary's family. Illinois. It's been a terribly difficult time for my wife. Well, uh, it's been a terribly difficult time for both of us. You see, we can't have any more children. It might kill her. daughter. Beautiful baby girl. I loved you. You son of a bitch. Dear Janie, it's been more than five years now since your daddy was killed. 
I miss him, and I miss you. I know now that the way I felt about Wild Bill only happens to a person once in their life. Like Doran Blue, it's the same kind of love. They just don't know what to do with it. First thing in the morning. No, I can't. Why not? I don't understand you, Tony. Why won't you even come out and look at it? Because I'd probably love it, and that would make it even harder. Just tell me one time why you won't marry me, and I'll quit asking. If you love me like you say you, you do. I do. Then why? You, you like a town? The ranch ain't lively enough for you, is that it? I didn't build that ranch out there with my own hands, out of nothing. Just to live out there by myself with no wife and... and no children. Apologize, Dora. I love you. I always will. I'm asking you for the last time, Dora. Will you marry me? I can't. I love you more than anything. But I can't marry you. just passing through and I thought I might grab a bed for the night. I didn't know you was having a shindig. Well... Who's getting married? Uh... Come and dance. I don't dance. Sure you do. Come on. Ain't the bride Grendel Stewart's daughter? Uh-huh. She was still a kid. Oh, no, she's, uh, <clears throat> she's uh, 18, 19. Which one of your cowboys is marrying her? The one you're dancing with. The hell you say? Well, that's true. You son of a bitch! Simmer down, Martha Jane. Shh. 
Simmer down? You chilled with the best friend I ever had. Does Dora know about this? Couldn't you tell her before she finds out from somebody else? You tell her yourself on your way straight to hell, Teddy Blue. I ain't doing your dirty work and I ain't dancing at your goddamn wedding. Martha Jane. Oh. inside. It's over. Plenty to eat and drink and, and music and everything. Just go, go on in. Enjoy yourselves. It's all over. I never thought you'd turn into a son of a bitch, Blue. Let me tell you something. You see this porch? I built this porch with my hands. A door. And, and a bathroom that's big enough to, to hold that copper tub that she loves so much. And, and a kitchen for doozy that she would have thought she'd have died and gone to heaven in. Door never even came out to look at it. And every time I look at it, I know that she's never gonna be here to welcome me home. I guess I just I just got tired of hoping, that's all. Yeah, well, what am I gonna tell her? You just tell her that I don't change the way I feel about her. Oh, she ain't gonna understand that. Hey, she gave up paying customers years ago for you. I know that. You just tell her that nothing's changed. I will. But it ain't true. If you were in love with him and he was going to marry somebody else, do you think I would go to his wedding? Well, I didn't plan it that way. It just kind of happened, Dora. Well, no true friend of mine would have gone. I mean, why didn't you speak up when the preacher said, does anybody here see a reason why these two shouldn't be married? Well, I sort of missed that part. I can't believe he did this. You could have been the bride if you wanted to. He asked you plenty of times. Oh, now you're going to take his side. I am not taking his side. God almighty, Dora. Blue let you down. I didn't. And if you can't see that, then the hell with both of you. <laughs> Where's my hat? <laughs> I'm here to see. I ain't in the mood for your fancy job flapping Billy Cody. Hey, Martha Jane, I've traveled a thousand miles and I've gone to considerable expense to find you to make you a star of my Wild West show. Billy, I got a real itch to shoot somebody this morning. If there was an old friend, I'm advising you to stay out of my way. Now you think about it. Because we're going to play for the crowned heads of England. I'm going to put your name on the poster and I'm going to put your face on the poster. Yeah, I can see it now. Calamity Jane, half man, half woman. Right between the dog boy and the two-headed rattlesnake. No goddamn thing. Now you can assault me if you want to. I'm trying, but it don't seem to be taken. Damn fool sideshow. Mail came. Letting here for Martha Canary. Must be a mistake. Oh, that's Martha Jane. That's her real name. Oh. But I'll probably never see her again. Mm -hmm. Never say never. One of the cowboys from downstairs just told me Martha Jane gave Blue a black eye at his own wedding. 
Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, Daisy. Oh, I treated her like Judith Iscariot. She's the best friend that I ever had. No man ever fought blue on my account. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do now? Well, you're going to stop feeling sorry for yourself right this minute. Get up. Wash your face. Brush your hair. You got a fancy gentleman calling downstairs. Who is it? Well, I'll give you a hint. He called me a Nubian beauty. <laughs> what in the nation is a Nubian beauty? Something from the Bible. Sent his call. Billy? Dora. <laughs> Billy. Oh, look at you. Oh. These are for you. <gasps> Fiddle sticks. <laughs> Dora ain't no child. She can't be bribed with this stuff. Doozy, if you used to appreciate presents a little bit, you might get some. You know, you made quite an impression on Dr. Ramsey's name. Dr. Ramsey's? He ain't big enough for me, Bill Cody. And neither are you. Billy, oh, it's beautiful. How did you know I would be my same size? Dora. If you was to lose your figure, half the men in the West would give up and get married. <laughs> Look at you, you already did give up and get married. How is Lulu, anyway? That was a mistake. I should have married you, Dora. Well, what brings you to Montana? I'm recruiting talent from a Wild West show. We're going to play the Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Well, don't that take the case? Yeah, I got Annie Oakley, you got cowboys, you got Indians. Hell, I got Sidney Bull himself signed up. <laughs> Have you gone crazy? The Indian Wars may be over in Missouri, but not out here. I can deal with Sitting Bull. Dora, I want you to come to Europe with me. You're going to love Europe. Do um, <laughs> a cream or lemon with your tea? All the hell with the tea. Open your presents, Dora. I got French champagne in here. <laughs> Dora, in my life, I've met hundreds of women. A lot of them rich and beautiful. But every night when I blow out my light, yours is the face I see. Now, we both know that I got rich telling whoppers. But them's the truest words I've ever said in this life. Are you going to open that champagne? Dora. I've known Jim and Bartle since I was a skinny kid tagging along on a wagon train they were leading. That wagon trip washed out when the Arkansas flooded. After half a lifetime, three of us still haven't washed out. I knew Bartle and Jim when they were young. In my mind, they haven't changed. It was a shock to me to realize that none of us was young enough to be wintering hard anymore, let alone in the Rockies. I dare say we're not too hard to track anymore. Probably left a trail of tobacco spit any city fied dude to follow. This was once a, a lively town. Uh, ten years ago, there were two saloons out there. I hate to see a place dry up. You know, we could have our own town. No ears. Could be the mayor. I'll be the judge. And you can be the sheriff. And you can arrest anybody that comes to town. Perfect. We could charge big fines for for trespassing or for, or for spitting on the street. It could be beavering as a way to get rich. And what's gonna draw people? Your good looks or my sunny disposition? <laughs> Darling Janie.
It's bitter cold as something. I had to put the ink in the coffee pot to thaw it. It was froze solid. But I have to write these letters so you'll know a little bit about me, for I could someday get ate by a bear, get my head stove in by some tough. Someone who runs loose like I do can get killed pretty quick. Sweet little girl like you should read this stuff. But someday, when you're grown, I hope you can read these letters and know something of your mother. Martha Jane. Damn it to hell! What? What are we doing? Sleeping. What's got you so itchy? Look at your sarapuses, that's what. Look like you belong in the hospital, both of you. Mm. One that keeps an undertaker handy. Hey, you ain't one to be criticizing other people's appearances, Clive. I know. I look no better myself. Probably worse. We just got no business spending our lives wandering around, sleeping in the snow. Hey, nice catch, no ears. I mean, we ain't kids no more. There ain't no more beaver. There ain't no dry firewood. It's just three fools and an engine. And the engine's only in it for the company. Except for Jim. Not one of us can hit a squirrel in broad daylight unless he stands ten feet in front of us and says, cheese. You don't usually complain. <laughs> Nobody's going to appreciate it if you throw a fit, Clavity. My point is, is that Billy Cody's right. The big adventure's over. It's over and that's that. He's right to make a show of it and sell it to the toots and dudes. I should have thought of a Wild West show. I got to the West a long time before Billy. You ain't planning on joining Billy's spectacle, are you? No, I ain't. Not for a million dollars. Then where are you going, half cocked? You ain't even had breakfast yet. I'm going nowhere. I got nowhere left to go. But if you're smart, you'll stop sleeping in the damn snow. One of these warrants are gonna wake up froze to death. particular kind of blizzard, one that confuses everything. Even the best scouts refuse to move in a white wind. I should have known better. Jane, I'm sorry for the things I said before. I didn't mean them. You're my best friend. It's okay. You're safe. You're home. You're gonna be all right. Bless your heart.
things don't improve around here, I'm gonna have to go back to entertaining customers myself. Seems like the more we make, the more we spend. We never get out of the hole. We might if we quit relocating all the time. How's this? <laughs> How are you feeling? Better. Uh, what were you fools doing out in the blizzard? We was looking for you, that's what. Let's be of you, but don't be so stupid next yeah, time. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. I'm going to see about getting you back a couple of beds. But don't be getting any ideas about the girls. It's business. Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am, Dora. Thanks, dudes. I thought I saw you beaver boys sneaking in the back door. Jane? Newsy? How you doing, Billy? I brought you something to get the chill off. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, this here is Doc Ramsey's. Gentlemen? He's helping me get my show together. Much obliged, Bill. So what are you boys doing? Trapping beavers or what? Uh, mostly or what? The beavers are all gone. Oh, Jim. He's reluctant to admit it. Oh, I know how you feel, Jim Rag. I feel the same way about the buffalo. But there's no sense grieving interminably. And I got a better proposition. I want you to join my illustrious company, and I'm going to make you heroes. Thanks, dude. <laughs> no, we ain't no heroes. We ain't even in the army anymore. You got to think of the younger generation, Bartle. The plains is filling up with towns. Pretty soon, the only way people will have to see riding and shooting is in a Wild West show. Yeah, but you're, you are partly to blame, Billy. Yeah. You're the one who made the name Killing Buffalo. Next thing we knew, they was all gone, and the Indians was too starved to fight. Now, if we had just kept those buffalo, I believe that. I believe this whole business would have, would have lasted my lifetime. Bartle, that is something I regret myself. I'm buying buffalo. I'm trying to bring them back. I got over a hundred head grazing on my ranch. Yeah. Oh. You're buying buffalo? Everyone I see, Jim. Now, the way I see you boys, this is Lewis and Clark. After all, it was their expedition that started the West. You'd be my stars. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Billy, but me and Jim would rather spit on the flag than make a mockery out of ourselves. Is there money in it? Money? It'd make you prosperous, Jim. I would go further. I'd say it's gonna make you rich. Well, I am happy to say that we cannot be bought for 30 pieces of silver. I can. I'm gonna be in it. Uh, well, more than three people in a room, you, you, you clam up like a dummy. There's gonna be hundreds of people watching this show. Thousands. Thousands. Do I have to talk? No. Then I'm in. Good, Jim. Welcome aboard. Now, Bartle, what about you? Now, come on, Bartle. Uh, Lewis and Clark ain't no heroes of mine. And the jackass can walk to Oregon. Don't be so stubborn. Who do you want to play? Geronimo? You... Bull. <laughs> Cody. Uh, hey, you are you old proud of good you? <laughs> hey. You planning to murder me for my valuables? You got that look in your eye. I just can't figure out what the name of Sam Hill could have possessed you to want to be part of the Dollar and Circus. I need the money. What in the blazes you need money for? You can't even stand to sleep with a roof over your head. I got an inspiration. When Billy started talking about Buffalo, I figured if he can buy Buffalo, why not Beaver? Buy beaver. Where on earth are you gonna buy beaver? I don't know. But somewhere. I figured if we bought a few pairs and let them loose up in the hot creeks, they could procreate and proliferate and be plentiful again. Is that why you joined up with Billy? Yep. I don't know why you're so cantankerous about it. You've been wanting to join a ball. Uh, oh, fool! 
So what are you gonna be, Lewis? And I'll be Clark, or what? No, I'll be Lewis. No, you no. be Clark. Oh, I'm gonna be Lewis. <laughs> Martha Jane, oh, give me a beer. How the hell with that? Drink whiskey with me. <laughs> you know I'm a, a reformed man, Martha Jane. Oh. Don't tell me your child ride made you change your foolish ways. I'm just too old to start drinking whiskey at 10 in the morning. Yeah, well, I'm too old to stop. Dora, she, um, <clears throat> she ain't, she ain't hurrying down this morning. Listen, Blue, she threw a mad dog tantrum at me just for going to your wedding. And figure out how mad she is at you. Uh, I wish you wouldn't take it so, so hard. Well, if it's not tea, Blue, what a surprise. Billy? Whiskey tea. You look, uh, prosperous. Circus life must be agreeing with you. What did Bartle and Jim say? Jim's in. Well, if you ain't got Bartle, you ain't got Jim. Well, what about you, Calamity? Did you reconsider my offer? You're an original. Well, Billy, my reputation's all I got. And it ain't for sale. How about you, Blue? I reckon you're still the best rider and roper around, even if you're looking a little over the hill. Oh, uh, sure, Billy. Next time there's a blizzard in hell. <laughs> Doozy! You're looking, uh... You're looking good. You're looking better than a skunk like you has any business looking. Uh-huh. You, uh... You got a message for me? I got a message, all right. Yeah? She's expecting Mr. Cody in her sitting room. <laughs> if you both will excuse me, Calamity. Very nice to see you. Uh-huh. I'm coming, Dora. <clears throat> hey. Give me a whiskey. Give one to Martha Jane. Now, Blue, don't get all crazy. I'm 40 years old, Martha Jane. More, probably. And unfortunately, I don't shoot people for that kind of stuff anymore. You hurt her real bad. You know she don't care about Billy. It's better than crying over you for a while. Now, you've been my friend a long time, Blue. If you feel lower than scum at the bottom of the pond right now, you got it coming. Hmm. Dave, give me a bottle. Hell, Blue. You still don't understand why Dora wouldn't marry you, do you? Nope. And I don't suppose I ever will. Well, I figure you got a right to know. When Dora was small, she grew up in a farm in Kansas. They could barely scratch a living. When the war came, the soldiers stole the livestock. When the sickness came, and they fell to it. Dora's sisters died, and her mother. Boys just run off. I never knew that. Finally, it was just Dora and her father. She was 11 when he died. She walked to Abilene, all the way, barefoot, thin as a twig. She never forgot the feeling of being hungry and watching everybody die. She's scared to death to live out on a farm, Blue. Afraid you'd go off and something might happen to you? Afraid she'd starve? I wouldn't have let her starve. I would have built a whole barn full of beef if it would have made her happy. I know that, Blue. But she can't talk to fear like Doris. Why didn't she tell me then? She 
was afraid if you knew, you might have moved to town to marry her. That would have killed your spirit. And seeing that would have killed Dora. Thanks. Thanks for telling me that, Martha Jane. Take care, Blue. Strictly on uh, I'll set his leg. Uh, you will. Uh, oh, hell, didn't I nurse the miners through the smallpox? Of course, most of them died. Uh, Doozy, did you make me some bandages? Mm -hmm. No ears, cut me a split about yay long. The rest of you clear out of here. Uh, uh, that goes for you too, Billy. Martha Jane told me. Told you what? Why you wouldn't marry me. Why didn't you tell me? I never would have married anybody. I could have learned to live in a town. No, no, you've got to live out on your ranch. On the land, under the sky. That's who you are, Blue. But I would have done it for you, Dora. I would have done it for you. But it's too late. I know. What are we going to do, Dora? best that we can. We'll just do the best that we can. Can you believe Bartle's going no years? Mr. Cody has invited me to join him on this great journey as well. Well, you ain't going, are you? I would like to see this water they speak of. 
They say it's so vast you can't see the far bank. What's the use of all that water? Can't drink it or water crops with it. A prairie of water you can't drink? No. Nope. Salt. Do fish live in it? Yep. Some of them are as big as a house. These fish are as big as the boat? Yep. Some bigger. Maybe we should ride around this water. You can't. The ocean goes to the top of the world. I would like to know more about this ocean. It's because people fail to gather precise information about life-threatening matters that many of them are no longer alive. So you're set on going, then? I must see this water and these great fish and bring the knowledge back to my people. No ears. Mm. Child, you think you'd know her if you saw her? Of course I would, just as you would if you saw her. Well, if you're passing by Illinois on your way to England, would you look out for her? Tell me what she's doing. Find slicker, no way. Check up on that pink pony, will you? Miss Dora. Can you tell me all about the queen when you come back? I sure wish you were coming with us, Dora. I deeply wish it. Will you show them. Show them how wild the West really is. Goodbye. Good shot. Bye. Bye, Dora. You should have come with us, Calamity. It's gonna make you famous. I am famous. I can't stomach all this silly hanky wave. Get the hell out of here. Bye, Clam. So long, y'all. I hadn't been gone a week when I got the letter that the woman I gave you to had died. My heart ached for you, sweetheart. I wanted so bad for you to know you had a mother. A mother who loves you. The captain said he'd taken you home to England. Don't that beat all. England. Right where my partners were headed without me. Why didn't you tell me I could have helped you. Damn it to hell, Dora. This letter's been to hell and back. It's almost a year old. I should have gone with Billy. Maybe you can catch up to them. You have to try. She needs a mother and she's got one. Even a broken down old bullwhacker is better than no mother at all, I guess. Oh, you'll be a wonderful mother. And you can bring her back here and we can all live together. I thought it was best for her, Dora. There ain't 
a day gone by and regretted it. You did the best that you could. doing the right thing going after her honey if I could see one of my babies again even if I had to go halfway around the world nothing could stop me I don't even know where she is I guess I gotta find her Don't miss me. <laughs> I miss you already. <sighs> Do you remember the first night that we saw Blue in place in Abilene? Sure, I remember. And he was covered with dust. And he walked up to me and said, Ma'am, would you dance with me? <laughs> and the dust from his clothes kept making me sneeze. And we just laughed. And the more that I sneezed, the more we laughed. That was when I, I knew that we were both done for. And then later that night, he rode his horse right up the stairs to my room. <laughs> Kicked the banister right off. What are you going to do with a fellow like that? <laughs> Ma'am? Will you dance with me? Dear Jane, I'm coming halfway around the world to find you. 
I aim to bring you home and give you all the things I should have given you all along. I ain't never been lucky, but either my luck has finally changed or God's taken pity on a confirmed old sinner like your mother. I caught up to Billy's show in New York as they were pulling up the anchor. An hour later, and I'd have had to swim for it. chance of me making you famous. I told you, Billy, I already am famous. I'm gonna let you make me immortal. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. It's great to see you, too. Come on. Good. Hey, fellas. How do you, boys? How do you? Jim! Ha, 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 ha. Here. I thought you wanted nothing to do with this debacle. Well, to tell you the truth, I just couldn't live without you, boys. I had myself to sleep every night. Oh, yeah, I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> Think this rig will get us all the way to England? I'll be dang. Sitting bull. Billy's crazy. Tell me, why have you forsaken your people? Perhaps you haven't realized, Sitting Bull, we are both on this boat together. Then you will die alone in the water, and I'll feed you to the fish. Howdy, Chief. How'd you like a little smoke? Think about whether you want to trade in your life for his. Is it a good cigar? Oh, yeah, it's real good. He has become too popular. It has confused him about what is important. Nah, he never knew about what was important. What the hell is that? Oh! Oh! Annie Oakley? Glam BJ. How do you do? How do you? Oh! Seeing as you're the only two females in this here outfit, how about I buy you a little drink? Thank you, but I don't drink. Oh! Well, uh, how about if I join you? See how I do against the world's famous marksman. I'm sorry, but I only compete in the arena. If you excuse me, I do need to practice. Oh, me too. I need to practice too. Pull! Damn! Pull! I got that one. I hit that last one. Pull! gonna leave without saying goodbye to me why do you have to go to Belfouche this is a good town for business you mean it's convenient for you I'm just the right distance off so you can come and visit me and your new little wife won't find out about me don't you pull that on me a wife is one thing love is love is another I never would have married her if 
If I'd understood, I never would have married her if you told me the truth in the first place. Dora, Dora, it's not too late to change your mind. It is too late. It's over. It's done. I've sold this place. Dora! Don't start with me, Blue. You don't deserve feeling sorry for, and I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Well, I'm not going to Belfouche. Good. Maybe it's better that way. Maybe it is. If the whole point is to get as far away from me as you possibly can, maybe you should have gone to England with Martha Jane and Billy Cody. You could have been a regular hell-raising Lily Langtree. Maybe you should have gone to England. Oh, yeah. You're a better rider and roper than any of those other cowboys. Come here. Don't leave me, Dora. Please. Can it be like it's always been between us? I can't. Every time it gets harder for me to let you go, it's gotten to the point where I fear you're leaving from the moment that you arrive. It makes it awful hard to find any joy in life. Don't ever think that the loving and the hurting ain't, ain't on, on both sides. Darling Janie, your mother was not meant for sea travel. The boat rolls day and night. I had no notion there was so much water in the world. No ears saw a whale today and thinks it is the most extraordinary event of his long life. Thinks it might be the first fish, or maybe the first creature of any kind. He said it was so large that it might even be as old as the world itself. He ain't even got to England yet, and he can hardly wait to get home again to tell his people about the whale. I don't think I ever saw him so happy. London is a great place. It ain't the same sky we have back home. I ain't never been no great tracker, but this place has me so confounded I can't even tell which way's which. No sun or mountains to take your bearings from. Just buildings everywhere you look. I can't figure out how all these people can tell where the hell they're going, let alone how I can find one house and one little girl. Go on exploring. I got me some business to tend to. Yeah, what, what kind of business you got in these parts? <laughs> Fella named Tim is supposed to have a river around here someplace. You know I ain't exactly the church going type, Cheney. Generally, even my backsliding goes unrepented. But a little prayer keeps going round round in my head. Please let me find my little girl. The sun has not gone down a single day that I ain't regretted giving you away. I know I ain't no blue ribbon prize, but I ain't a quitter neither. By God, I'm gonna find you, honey, or go belly up trying. Cause whatever else I am, I will always be your mother, Martha Jane. Look at that.
100% real. Beaver. Did you know that's what they did with them? Made stovepipe hats? No, I sure as thunder and tarnation did not. You think that could be one of our own? Nah, I th th that's hard to tell. They used to be that dark color up on the Yellowstone. Yeah, and way up above the mussel shell. Could be one of our own. I knew you were in London. I've seen the posters of your show everywhere. She didn't expect to see me again. Please come in. Please come in. May I offer you some tea? No, thank you. Something a little stronger, perhaps. No. Thank you, Daphne. No. I'm sorry about your wife. Thank you. Please sit down. Jamie's just a little girl, and seems to me she needs a mother. I may not be much, but I am her mother, and I guess she's got a right to know it. I can understand your feelings, of course, and in many respects you are right. But you must also understand that Janie knows nothing at all about you. As far as she is concerned, we are her natural parents. That's what you told her. Yes, it is. We believed it would make her happier. And she has been a very happy child. Well, I don't want to scare her nothing. But I want to take her home with me. Miss Cannery, when I first met you, you didn't have a home. And the life that you were leading was hardly appropriate to bringing up a child. Now, you tell me how your circumstances have changed. Well, my friend Dora, that's Miss Dufran, has offered us her house to share, and we'd be a good family to Janie. You wouldn't have to worry about that. She'd never go cold or hungry. What kind of house is it exactly? It's just, you know, a house. When can I meet her? I'm not sure that that would be at all wise. Mister, I'm going to tell you one way or the other. I'm coming back, and I'm going to see her. You must be Annie Oakley. What? Annie Oakley, the famous Marks woman. Ain't her. Give me an 
another one? <laughs> Come on! Who are you then? I am goddamn Calamity Jane. I can outshoot and outride that prissy little Miss Oakley with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Look at this. She devil of the Yellowstone! Scout for General Cutler! Run, Damn fine shot, too. The English are all kind of skittish, ain't you? Right, right, right. I'll be putting this fellow in number 10. Right, sir. Come back here. Yeah. Get it. Oh, hell, I guess we're gonna have to take the real bullets away and put blanks in all the guns before somebody gets killed. But hell, she's Calamity Jane. What do they expect her to sit around and crochet doilies all day? I see the people in this country carry no guns. They're afraid of Martha Jane. Yeah, I guess the queen ain't gonna come to the show. She's afraid of getting killed. Hey, are you gonna let her go? Oh, yeah. We're not taking her to keep it here any longer. We have to. Well, how long is that gonna be? As soon as she sobers up a bit. Solid. I have never seen such a such a place before. One minute, you can see where you're going, and the next minute you you can't hardly see your feet. This way. Yeah. said you found beaver, but I didn't believe it. Boys, I need money. How much you got? Not much. I'm putting it away for something important, Calam. It's just a loan, Jim. Did I ever not pay you back? Yeah, plenty of times. Come on, Bartle, how much you got? Well, no, I need some back. Tell her what for. Well, I have a weakness, Calamity. What I don't know about you, mean? If you're blind and deaf, you don't. I've got an overpowering fondness for <laughs> redhead ladies. My barn bone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it back. Yeah. Hope it makes you happy, Bartle. Really? It 
You don't usually last long, mate. But there are moments, Martha Jane. Moments of true and, and outright joy. Jim. Mm. Mm. Where, Jim? Thanks, fellas. You're true friends. Frank will ever see that money again. Gentlemen, can we please try it again? Annie was the only one in the show still allowed to use real bullets in her guns. I've been watching her like a hawk, and have yet to see her miss once. Hey, Red Dog, I want you to scare them people! Billy, I gotta talk to you. Okay. Billy, I need some money. I need an advance on my wages for the run of the show. I don't know. Yeah, and if I get thrown in jail room too many times, you can just let me rot in there. Well, hell, I'll give you the money. But I don't want to hear another word about there's not another nickel till the end of the year. Thanks, Billy. I'll drive the hell out of that stage. Listen, if you get an idea to shoot up another saloon, you go ahead and I'll bail you out because it's good publicity. Thanks, Billy. This is a private club for gentlemen only. Excuse me. Your lingo's a little foreign to me. You ain't implying nothing about my manhood, are you? No, sir. I'm afraid I shall have to call the police. Go right ahead. Tell them Billy Cody's my bail. What's up? Howdy, Jeff. This. I'm looking to make a small bet. I'm a shooting match tomorrow between Annie Oakley and the stupid fella you all got shooting from your side. Lord. Lord Windhoven. I think there are those of us who'd put money on the English marksman carrying the day. Good. How do the odds stand? Two to one. Favoring the Englishman. Let's make it a little more interesting. Contest is best out of a thousand shots. What would the odds be if I bet Annie Oakley beat this guy by ten shots? <laughs> I'd say you could easily get three to one. Fine. And if she beat this fella by forty shots? <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, what would the odds be? You'd be throwing your money away. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm looking for ten to one. Annie beats this guy by 40 shots, and I put up 200 pounds. Anybody take that bet? Come on over here to the table. We'll find some fella we can trust to hold on to it. All right, sir. You're charged with trespassing. Just the fellow we can trust. Hey, hold on to this for us. There's no need to arrest this gentleman, officer. But we would appreciate it if you'd hold the fund until a small wager is settled. Glad to do it, Lord Window. See, you're him. Well, it should be fun. I'd certainly like to know the name of the man who would bet so heavily on my defeat. Name's Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane? Have a good time at the suit match! 
Miss Oakley? Can I speak to you privately for a minute, please? Do you mind? Not at all. What is it? See you later, huh? I need your help. But I can't very well ask you without telling me why. I know how to keep a confidence. Well, a few years ago, I had a child. Oh, see, that's why I came out here. To find my little girl. Now I need enough money to bring Ron back home. So I've scraped together everything I could. And I bet it all on your shooting match tomorrow. You gambled it all? Everything you have? Yep, and then some. Am I supposed to win or lose? Oh, win, of course. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. You're the best anybody's ever seen. I met this English lord. He ain't much. How much do I have to win by? Forty shots. I'll do my best, but... even if I hit every one out of a thousand, that means he's still gonna have to miss at least forty. I ain't never been lucky, but you have. You're the luckiest person I ever saw. Jane, when I was five, my father died, leaving my mother with seven children to raise. I took his old rifle off the mantle and learned how to use it. If I missed a bird or a squirrel we didn't eat, I learned not to miss. It wasn't luck. It was necessity. I sure got plenty of that. Well, it seems to me, in the long run, good and bad luck kind of balance each other out. I ain't got time for the long run. I gotta do everything right this time. It's the only chance I'll ever have. Ain't you, miss? Yes. Here, let me get that for you. Thank you. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> um, I, I... Where was you headed, ma'am? Actually, I'm, I'm just there. Oh. What's your name, mister? Ogden. Ogden for dose. Nice to meet you, Mr. Perdo. Hmm. What's that, Did she break a leg? Lord, no, it's just lost his shoe. Oh. Here's your shoe, man. Come on. Don't get on back inside. Well, now that you've rescued me, would you like a cup of tea? Are you fond of tea? Tea? I mean, maybe you should hitch your wagon first. Oh. Um, we haven't been formally introduced. I'm Miss Dora Dufresne. I would be pleased if you would join me for a cup of tea. After you've hitched your wagon, of course. Oh, ma'am, I intend to be right back. Coming back in them muddy boots. Oh, don't get all worked up. I ain't having five pounds of mud on my floors this early. We ain't open yet, Dora. We ain't even unpacked. You may not be open yet, but I am. I don't think it's gonna kill anybody if I have a gentleman for tea. Huh. From the looks of him, he can drink a bucket of tea. And you best go get a bucket. Hmm. Ogden? Ma'am? You seem awfully far away. Would you mind if I sat a little bit closer? Sit any place you like, Miss Dora. Thank you. There. 
That's better. <laughs> Away. Am I too heavy? Mama, you're as light as a feather. Well, then why don't you pick me up and carry me over to that bed? Nice, we could go on like this. You made me stay in here. Would you like to marry me, Ogden? <clears throat> you mean like Mom and Paul? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Mom and Paul. Do it today or when? <laughs> we could, or tomorrow. Well, let's do it today so you don't change your mind. I'm not gonna change my mind. about what I had. Tell me that. What you had was freedom. Now you never see freedom again. Well, about all I did with my freedom was cry. If it's Blue that you're worried about, he's going to find out that I'm married. Well, he's married too, and there is nothing that we can do about it. You got that right. Does Ogden know you're old enough to be his mama? I am not. And so what if I was? And so what are you going to tell Ogden when Blue come? Hmm? And what are you going to tell Teddy Blue? That I'm married. And you know what? I wish he would walk in that door right now. Plum crazy. shots, Windhoven has missed three, and Miss Oakley has yet to miss one. I'm sure he'll brace up presently. No nonsense now, Windhoven. Break your bird. Mark!
can't believe she missed one. She never missed one before. Oh, for goodness sake. She hit the first nine to nine. Oh. She's only human. This ain't a good time for her to be only human. How come? How much? How much you got on this? Everything. Everything. Oh. Is it the redhead money? The beaver money? On all the bets? Are you crazy? Goddamn calamitous is what I am. Oh. Ready? What did he pick up, Stone? I think. I think he's got a loose shoe. I can take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know where uh, Dora Dufran's establishment is? That's it right over yonder. Hotel Royale. Who's that? His name's Ogden Perdot. Uh huh. Why is he painting doors? Why? Because he's married to her. That boy is married to Dora? Yep. Talk of the town. I'll be in the saloon. found out or else he'd be on his way here. What am I going to do? I thought you said you hoped he'd come. Why do you always have to remind me when I say something foolish? What if he shoots Ogden? If he shoots him, he better shoot him dead, because Ogden's big. What am I going to do, Dizzy? What am I going to do? Right. Tell me what's going All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, go downstairs and give Ogden the rifle and tell him he should go shoot an elk. Good. Uh, he can take the wagon. And tell him no matter how long it takes, he's not to come back here without that elk. Hey, Blue. Frank. Whiskey. No, I ain't seen you since the Deadwood days. Hey, now, don't you go disturbing the peace, all right? I mean, the jail here ain't up to your standards. I ain't disturbing the peace. She must still like you. There goes Ogden. Hey, well, maybe he'll use up all his ammunition hunting. Won't have any left to kill you with when he comes back and finds you with his wife. You're gonna find me with his wife. I'll stay here and not go back. I ain't, I ain't living my oh. life here, no way. Well, yours is yours and mine's mine. Oh. I have lived 35 years with you and my God. You would rather have the company of a beaver.
can't do this anymore. Dora, I keep, I keep telling you that my marriage hasn't changed the way I feel about you. And that's the truth as far as I'm concerned. Your marriage changed everything? No, not everything. Some things can't be changed. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go. Just five more minutes. What if he gets an elk right away? Oh, he's not going to find an elk for five or ten miles. What... Whatever possessed you to marry that... <clears throat> that boy? I don't know, Bill. Hmm? You carried me out of the mud. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is the sanest reason for getting married I ever heard. I wish I'd have known that in Deadwood or Dodge City. There's plenty of mud there. We could have had ten grandkids by now. Oh, don't talk like that. You'll make me cry. Oh, hush, door of the sky you ain't falling. You got a fine strapping youth to take care of you. Better than a broken down old cowpoke like me. But I love you the most. I can't help it. I love you the most. I know you do. Sometimes things just get away from me. Yeah. I guess they do. Who got married first? Oh, let's not argue about who got <laughs> married first. We can argue about that till till bulls grow teeth. It won't make it won't make any difference. Hmm? And what... What about this... <clears throat> this boy? Is he, uh... Is he old enough to, uh... <clears throat> is he old enough to talk? Don't be mocking my husband. He's a peach of a boy, and I'm fond of him. Uh-huh. Well, <clears throat> I'm gonna call him... Um, Ox. You know what the function of an ox is. The function of an ox is to, uh, <clears throat> is to take you out of the mud. And as long as you restrict him to, uh, to mud duty, you won't hear no complaint from me. Well, it turns out I needed somebody. He's only a boy, but he's a good boy. I was only joshing you, Dora. I've joshed you a thousand times before. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm not myself. see the show now. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Annie Oakley, the greatest American markswoman of all time, has won the day. What's the score? I can't look. Oh, she's going to win easy. Easy. Yeah, but how much? The final score, Lord Windhoven, 935, and Miss Annie Oakley, 984. Yeah. 84 minus 35. I can't think. 
Is that more than 40, Bartle Hill? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. 35, 45, 55, 60. Good bet, madam. Oh, well done. <laughs> Shot in Billy Cody, if that's any consolation. It's not, but thank you. Yeah. I only wish she was a drinking woman. I never wanted to buy somebody to drink so bad my entire life. Well, as a matter of fact, I am feeling extremely thirsty. Here's to Annie Oakley, the greatest shot that ever lived. No, no. To all of us Buffalo girls, we gotta stick together. Yeah! Whoa! Whoa! Got one, Doozy? Yeah. Come on in. You did good. What's the matter? Are you sick? <laughs> oh. Dora? I guess I know why you're crying. me no more. It's all right, though. I'm, I mean, I was, I was expecting this and all. Okay. I find you well. Yep, I'm real well. Thank you. Good. Is Janie here? Can I see her? No, I'm afraid she is out at the moment. Did you tell her about me? No, I did not. I told you I was coming back. I know. Miss Cannery, I will do nothing that could disturb or upset Jane's life. You son of a snake. I am only considering Jane's best interests. The hell you are! She's my daughter! She needs the sun and the sky and the Rocky Mountains, and she needs me! I could show her things most people just dream about. Could you? Yes, I could. Then come with me. You throwing me out, mister? No, I am not. I want to show you something. Come with me, please. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Come, darling, come. <laughs> Daddy, did you see me? Did you see me down that tree? I did, my darling, and it was wonderful. Jenny, I'd like you to meet Miss Cannery. How'd you do? Well, a whole lot better now that I get to meet you. Miss Cannery has come a long way, all the way from America. She's a kind of... Kind of a cousin. A cousin. Have I ever met you before? Yep. But you're just a little bitty thing. Too young to remember me. Oh. That was some pretty good riding. Thank you. Do you ride? I got me a big black stallion. He was pretty wild in his younger days. I love horses, don't I, Daddy? Yes. I hope to have my own one day. I know you will. Do you really think so? Come on, Jane, it's getting late. we better go back. Are you coming to dinner with us? Well, I wish I could. But I know we'll meet again. Come on. Bye. Bye-bye, Janie. I'm getting better and better. Yes, you are, darling. But are you listening to your instructor? Oh, yes, of course, darling. What did you learn today, though? I learned to go from trot to canter. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Buffalo Bill Cody, and today, for your entertainment pleasure, we're going to show you the American West as it really was and never will be again. began with Lewis and Clark, two brave and fearless mountain men who blazed the trail westward all the way to the Pacific! <laughs> Back that ear. You have no bullets. Sorry, I forgot. You mess with no ears, I'll eat your liver. Tell Remedy, you're on! Go! Get on your horses!
woman who walks like a man can walk no more. No sitting bull, it's just a show now. Janie has been pleading with me to allow her to come and see the show. And so finally, I had to give in and bring it. I didn't know that you were Calamity Jane. Is it really the last night? Can't we come again tomorrow? Well, what do you say you and me go for a little ride together? I'm not sure. Just round the ring. She'll be safe with me. Can I, Daddy? Please? Very well. Come on. In my lifetime, I've had a lot of misadventures. My great joys have been few. The time I held you in my arms the day you were born, and the time I held you sitting up there in front of me in the saddle like I imagined you hundreds of times. You're real to me now, Janie. And for the first time, I can finally let you go. What's this? Are you... Are you getting married? Nope. Then what you sprucing up for? Queen's already seen you. Damn, no wonder barbers get paid for doing this. Yeah. Southern nation. You're starting, you're starting to look like a, like a half block chicken. Give me that. Give me that. Here. Here, just... Since when did you know how to cut hair? Yeah, you always said the only thing I was any good at was skin and beer. It's the same deal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are you appearing before a judge or, or, or something? Nope. I'm here on behalf of the mayor of Ten Sleep, Montana. And the judge and sheriff, too, for that matter. We've been figuring on starting up a kind of zoo of our own and supplying it with samples of all the animals that are native to the area. But we've been having trouble with the beaver. You see, the beaver's been all trapped out. We looked all over them parts, but have been unable to find any. So I was wondering... If you could see your way clear to selling us a healthy pair. One male and one female. So they, so they might, so they might, you know. What do you say? Would you sell us a pair of your own? Here's Comanche. He's the best horse in the show. He might look like a big handful right now, but you take charge of him. Make him respect you. For me? Really? Yeah, he's for you. I will. I promise. 
Excuse me, please. I'm so One glad moment. we have the same name. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Well, maybe just... Not just like me. But there'll always be a streak of me in you. And a streak of your daddy, too. you gave was worthy of her. How come you ain't wearing your new ears? They were attracting too much attention. Someone might steal them. I wear them now at night when I'm alone. What do you hear when you put them on? I hear all the conversations I missed in my life. And the voices of all the old-time people who are no longer in this world. Hey, Jim. How are the beaver doing? This is not right. Jim's spirit has left his body. That ain't true. Jim's spirit ain't gone no place. He'll be fine once we get him back to the Rockies. What's the matter? You've been moping and moaning around here ever since Blue left. I ain't feeling so good. What's ailing you? One of the husband. You got you one. <laughs> now I think I'm gonna have a child. myself if you wasn't so puffy from all that crying. Well, get back in bed and stay there. You ain't gonna do a lick of work till you have this baby. I got too much to think about to get in bed. Oh, think laying down. You done miscarried twice. I'm scared enough now you're bringing that up. I'm trying to scare you enough to get you back in that bed. Maybe to be a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be so dull around here if we had us a little girl. Well, things ain't so dull. I got a husband who eats a beef a week. I don't brings home more than enough to feed everybody. You never have to worry about enough meat with that boy around, that's for sure. Hmm. Come to think of it, this little girl might not be so little. She got a big daddy. <laughs> I can't be sure, Doozy, but in my heart, I think it's Blue's child. Well, that don't matter much. Baby's got to take what they can find. They can't be worried about this paw, that paw. Well, let them have two paws if they can find two, huh? <laughs> hey. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Both the babies that I lost were blues. The little girl didn't live for three hours, and the little boy lived two months. I, I wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for blue. Well... If you want a good, strong, live baby, please, get on up and go lay down. I'll make you a bowl of soup. <laughs> Come on. 
You mad even now. <laughs> <laughs> We should make camp. But it ain't close to nightfall. We should stop now, make camp. It don't make sense, but he ain't never wrong. Hey, Jim. Hey, you're gonna hunt up some measly looking critter for supper. Figure. Five to ten years, and the beaver will take hold and be plentiful again. Yeah, maybe. We've seen some glory days. You and me. Sure we did, Jim. There is a God, Janie, and after all I've seen, I feel certain of it. Maybe we each had a reason for going all the way to the other side of the world. No ears got to see the first fish. Jim? Well, there's always been something of the preacher in Jim. The sermon just happened to be beaver. Bartle got to see the world, shake hands with the queen, and have a few moments of outright red-headed joy. As for your mother, honey, if I'd had to go to the moon and back for just one look at your sweet face, it would have been worth all the trouble. I'm not going with you, Martha Jane. I'm going to walk north to the Platte River. That's hundreds of miles. I need to find my people, if there are any of us left. And tell them about the great whale fish. I hope you find your people. The weather's good. It'll be a pretty walk. I'm headed to Doris in Belfouche. You should come for the winter if you can make it. You oughtn't to be wintering hard at your age. I'll be listening for your coming with my new ears. I'll be seeing you no ears. Thank you. 
Congratulations, ma'am. You may take possession whenever you like. Thank you. Ogden, I just bought a hotel, a beautiful, elegant hotel. We're moving to Deadwood in the Dakotas. You mean after the baby comes? No, after Lent. Thank you. Oh, honey, leave the piano. We'll buy a grand one once we get the hotel prospering. It's downright crazy to be moving now. No, it's not. If I wait till after the baby's born, it'll be winter, and I can't wait till spring. Look at that. It's Martha Jane. And Bartle. Oh, I don't know where Jim is. Martha Jane! I'm so glad you're back. We ain't all back. Jim's dead. What did he die of? It's one of them senseless things, I guess. What's this? A lot happened while you were gone. Yes. Who's the sap sucker? That's Ogden. He's my husband. How do? How do? I guess for once I'm tongue tied. <laughs> Come on, let's have a drink. Beautiful. <laughs> so, what do you think of Ogden? <clears throat> well, he's a whopping piece of dough. <laughs> but he ain't set yet. You can roll him into any kind of biscuit you want, but you better do it quick. You can never tell when a boy like that'll set. <laughs> Did you find her, Jamie? No. She's beautiful. Ain't she beautiful? She's even more precious in her picture. She looks just like you. So what you gonna do, Bartle? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll track down Billy Cody and sign back on with his show. I don't mind the show business. It's a it's a job. Pays well. I never thought I'd hear you want for work, Bartle. Maybe you just miss some red-headed English whores. Maybe I do. I expect I'll see you sometime, Bartle. Always have. I expect. You've seen some glory days, Bartle. You and I. The like a witch may never come again. Yeah, you and me, and old Jim. <laughs> My clown. My Bartle.
on you. You furry little sons of bitches. They could procreate and proliferate. Jim? And be plentiful again. I'm telling you right now, I ain't never moving no more. Well, never say never. Say never about something, life will spit it right back at you. <sighs> Look at me, I said I would never get married. You married? But I ain't you, and I ain't never moving no more. Will you go lie down now? All day! Yeah? You got that bed put up? Oh, we still in bed, Mom. Start on up the stairs if you can make it. You look like you about ready to drop that baby right where you stand in. It's coming. The pain's started. Land sinks. Oh, Dad! Come on, pick up! Come on, Dad, pick up! And your baby. Where's the baby? Let me hold the baby. I already told you I wouldn't move it no more. I'll go get you some cool milk. Gotta start getting your strength back. Where's Mother Jean? She uh, saw that pace from around. Come on down the kitchen, get some food in you. You look like you're about ready to take sick yourself. Come on. Mother Jane will sit with it. Raise her for me. She's gonna need. 
need a good mother. Say you will. I will. Martha Jane. Hey, Blue. Uh, you turn up in the darndest places. Never thought I'd see you stringing wire. Uh, well, if you're looking for a job, you're hired. I wish that's what I'd come for, Blue. Is everything all right with Dora? She had a baby girl. It's time the baby left. The baby left? She's beautiful. Just like her mom? Her eyes are blue. Janie, I'm sorry it's been so long since I've written to you. After Dora died, I lacked the spirit to take up my pencil. The baby's well and beautiful. Bartle has gone in the show business. He plays in a melodrama, a villain they call Black Bart, and has married him a red-headed actress who bosses him around something awful. Well, he don't seem to mind. I try to stay put most times, but sometimes I have to take to wandering God's foothills, glorious Rocky Mountains. In my mind, I still hear Bartle and Jim, argumentary as ever. Now and then, I'll come across one lone buffalo or a beaver, and it warms my heart. But never a day goes by that I don't miss my darling baby girl. I'll always be your mother, Calamity Jane.